does he know the next star already? Um, not yet. We still have one more here. Yeah, no, but he needs to know the next star okay. so he can get going on it. DCD readout complete. It's a little embarrassing how manic we are. These astronomers at the University of California, Berkeley, are connected remotely to the Keck telescope in Hawaii. It's one of the world's largest, and a night of looking at the stars costs $50,000. OK, Gary, I've uh, selected the next target. Throughout the night, they communicate with the telescope operator through a video camera and a computer screen. From the time the sun sets till the moment when the sun rises, we don't take any breaks. We just make sure the telescope is pointed at one star and then immediately another star and then immediately another star. Astronomer Jeff Marcy and graduate student Lauren Weiss are using the Keck telescope to search for planets outside our solar system, trillions of miles away. These exoplanets remained elusive for decades. But new technologies and space expeditions changed that. Since 1995, scientists have identified almost 4,000 of these planets, and the manic search continues. It's spectacular. There, wow. there it is. Look at that. Wow, that's There's beautiful. The, it's the inner and then the outer. We're going to be uh, nailing down this outer planet. Yeah, for sure. So this star has two planets, an inner planet that takes 10 days to go around the star. It's Jupiter-sized. And we're just now sensing that it has an outer planet that's three times the mass of Jupiter. And we're watching the star wobble around as these planets yank on the star gravitationally. Exoplanets exert a gravitational pull on the stars they orbit just as Earth pulls on its star, the Sun. Scientists discover exoplanets by measuring a star's light as it's being yanked at by its orbiting planet. The technique that we use to find extrasolar planets is called the Doppler technique. And it makes use of the fact that whenever you measure a light waves, if the object is moving toward you, those waves appear to be shortened. As the object is moving away from you, the wave appears to be lengthened. And so we measure these periodic changes in the wavelength. And night after night, year after year, we map out changes in velocity. Developing that technique took 12 years, and we found no planets at all during that development period. So that was frustrating. And then in 1995, the Doppler method started paying off. A Swiss team, followed by Marcy's own team, started finding the elusive exoplanets by the handfuls. We found many, many Jupiter-sized planets. We then found the first Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus-sized planets. We're seeing the biggest planets, the ones easiest to detect, but I have no doubt that there are smaller planets out there yet to be detected that our current technology simply can't find. Zero and liftoff of the Delta II rocket with Kepler on a search for planets in some way like our own. A huge breakthrough in the search for exoplanets happened in 2009 when NASA launched the Kepler telescope into space. The telescope looked for planets in a constellation of our Milky Way galaxy called Cygnus. Kepler used a simple method. It found planets by looking for signs that they were crossing in front of their stars and reducing their brightness. If a dark planet crosses in front of a bright globe, it's going to block a little of the starlight. Kepler has a special mission, to find planets similar in size and temperature to our own. Just how many of these Earth-like planets might be out there came as a shocking revelation in 2013 when Marcy's team presented its estimate. We found in the end that about one out of five sun-like stars has an Earth-sized planet far enough from the star so that it would be suitable for water in liquid form. Forty billion Earth-sized planets at habitable temperatures. This is a really interesting one. Now, the task is to find out how many of these Earth-like planets might actually have water. By watching how hard planets pull at their stars, Marcy and his team can figure out which ones are massive enough to have a rocky surface where water could pool and allow life to develop. The question of other intelligent life in the universe is perhaps our greatest question. And I think most of us have a split brain about the answer. 
Surely our universe is filled with other species that write poetry, compose music, and ponder their place in the universe. On the other hand, it's very mysterious and a little bit frightening that we have seen no definitive signs of these other advanced civilizations that supposedly are out there. Maybe advanced technological life poses a threat to itself due to the weapons it develops, the ability to change the global environment. Evidence of smoke palls from the burning oil in the Persian Gulf area. So perhaps those past civilizations that didn't make it are sending a very poignant message telling us to take care of our planet and take care of ourselves.